Hey guys, welcome back to some more rules. Yeah, today we're on the map Tank Graveyard. It's gonna be a 1v1. Yeah, this game was sent to us by Green from TF Clan. We had a few games from him on the channel before. Also, he has his own YouTube channel doing German rules games and other stuff. So I'll have a link in the video description to the clan and to his video, uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so he's playing as a Russian against, um, let's say, let's call him Toim. As a France guy, okay, I would say let's just kick it off and see what they're doing here. Look at some rules first. Okay, so not interesting. So Green is going double blitz. He's got a blitz in his main sector and on the front sector. Okay, interesting. He wants to have the buildings out very, very fast. His enemy, the France guy, is getting camouflage and blitz on his main sector. Okay, so I would say let's just see what they're building here exactly. Okay, Green as the Russian is getting two supply depots. A barracks over here to the city over here on the left side. Good decision to have a barracks here because you can have lots of control of this whole part here with only infantry by having control of the city here. Nothing can get through so easy then. Also, he's putting a barracks in the front here, probably, maybe if you can get through, sneak it up as far as possible. Also, having, he's putting a barracks here, also very good position to have it for this city and you know, on the field in general. And as a Russian to use uh, infantry, good job. And back here he's got a barracks um, to research very fast, he wants to have infantry right from the beginning, which is a good decision because he's playing against France. Okay, what's the France guy doing? He is only getting one supply depot and the airfield. Okay, not much to see on that side. Let's just keep it rolling. Ah, oh, wait. I missed the building, I think. Yeah. And the Maginot Bunker. Going right to the... right here. Okay. Why not? Let's see what he's going to be doing. So here comes a very fast fighter. Good decision because uh, Green does not have any ruses anymore because he had double blitz. Nice. Whoa. So Green got very lucky here. Because sometimes it happens if the trucks drive too close to each other. You can snipe him two with one plane. So one barracks died. So okay. Ten bucks down. So now he's pulling back his barracks here. Good decision to keep this one because it's important in case some kind of stuff comes by. Here because there's still camouflage up. Green can see there's a Maginot Bunker here. And I think good job to put the Maginot Bunker here because it can fry everything coming over the bridges, I would say. Even infantry. Okay, so now the France guy is getting the next building. Another Maginot Bunker. Okay, interesting. So the France guy wants to have a little defense with two Maginot Bunkers and then uses planes all the time. Now he got himself a light bomber. Okay, one's not going to be enough to do much damage, but if you have two of them, you can sack lots of units. Okay, Green's walking right into the Maginot Bunker, but he didn't see it before. So now he sees it. He's gonna probably going to move back, but a few infantry guys are going to maybe be fried or burned. Yeah, one's going to die. Here comes the planes. Okay, so if this Maginot Bunker builds up, I think not bad decision to use him because the roads that can get dangerous for you as a France guy like this are blocked now with two Maginot Bunkers, so now the guys have to run all around to do damage and then he, can, then he has time to react on it. Okay, so the France guy is using his planes pretty good. Okay, this one's not that good because it's bombing one single infantry. It should it be trying to bombing three at one time or something? But still, now we can. Now he has enough time to take down the infantry guys and everything. Here is pretty secure for now with the Maginot bunkers. And if he gets the air recon, he's pretty mobile and can move around the map very nicely. He can st I don't know. What do you think? Maybe he could have started started bombing some supply depots with his two bombers because he still had enough time to react on these few infantry guys coming by and doing some damage to a green's economy would have maybe been better right away just take down the supply depots don't let him even get money at all because if he would have built a maginot here in an emergency situation or something these guys wouldn't have no chance to get closer but still green's good at doing a nice job what you should do with, with russia Spread up your cheap infantry all around the map, especially against the France guy. But in this situation, it was a good choice to get an airfield for France, I would say. Because, yeah, infantry can't do much. Okay, what's Green doing now? 
at the moment not that much happening I would say we do a little faster now back here some infantry guys are getting pretty close but yeah nice decision to get a fortified position here costs only 20 bucks and it's gonna be enough for one or two infantry guys and you still got your bombers okay nice job now he's using the bombers to start bombing some buildings good decision this barracks is down yeah, Green is still trying to sneak around with his infantry guys from all sides. I think the France guy doesn't even have a air recon yet, or no kind of recon on the field. That's a little dangerous because the infantry guys can move around in the woods as they want, as they wish. Okay, infantry guys coming to different positions now. Now Green is building up an AA base, pumping out some AA guns. Yeah, because the en all the enemies got is. Uh, planes. Good to have some AA guns out before he starts bombing your important buildings, your supply buildings and stuff like that. Yeah, another fortified position here. And I think he's pretty good protected now. And even if green starts to get planes, he has a little AA on the ground already. And we shouldn't forget against tanks, not bad also. So he's pretty defensively now. But what he didn't do is get supply he only got one supply depot all the time we shouldn't forget that but because he played wisely he took he didn't lose no unit so not bad now he got his supply depots full oh now he's got almost lost a plane okay so what green is doing now is building a nice AA line to have pretty good map control here and now he's bringing out some uh, ISU good reaction against the bunkers okay nice job the France guy took down the infantry guy back here now he's sending an air recon to see if something's there and also getting the next supply depot. So he's in a not bad position even though he built some bunkers. But he doesn't care. He did a pretty good start off with 80 to nothing. But Green didn't play bad. I have to say he spread his infantry around, tried to annoy as much as possible. But France guy didn't play bad also. Okay, ice users are starting to shoot at the bunkers. Good decision. Yeah, and the France guy is still using his planes, but what I am not agreeing with is... Look, he's got an air recon and four light bombers. He, all he sees is AA here, and if he was uh, attentive, he would see AA building is in the front. So if he were to send all of his bombers around from behind all the time, I don't know if Green would have had enough time to pump back AA guns, and he's also taking a supply depot here. So these light bombers should be bombing uh, supply depots all the time. Right from the beginning, don't let the supply depots pay off for themselves. Okay, so the first, imagine those down, and immediately infantry is moving up to maybe sneak through here the city and stuff like that. Yeah, he's still using his bombers in front. Okay, we got two ISUs together, they do a pretty good amount of damage. Okay, now the France guy got himself an armor base, pumping out a recon. Yeah, armor base, pretty good reaction because France guy, is, uh, the Russian green is only playing with infantry and AA guns. Okay, green has got four supply depots now against, I think, only two. So that's not that good stuff. Yeah, one recon is not going to be enough. Yeah, he's going to probably use his bombers defensively, but still, see, no AA guns in the back. He could be doing some mad bombing. He's even got an air recon. So I just, I think this is a pretty big mistake now. The start off was pretty good with the air. But now he's not using his planes right. Luckily, there's not enough AA to kill a plane, so he can fly him back to the airfield and get him fixed. Okay, so the... This Maginot is going to be down pretty soon too, I think. Here comes the B1, BA11. Very important. Recon. Okay, the France guy back here researched the Zal 40. I think a tank that's always good to have. Assault gun and pretty good tank. Okay, so nice job from Green, he's sneaking up his AA very close to the enemy, so the planes can't even do it. not much in the middle here anymore. Okay, so for now Green does not have anything against tanks yet. Okay, his infantry, if you micro him right and surround the tank, it can be very powerful. Also, he's sneaking up some infantry guys in the front here. Um, a small thing, but these two infantry guys are keeping the France guy from expanding to this side. Those are some little things pretty smart to do. 
Okay, now he's starting to produce Goopy. Yeah, always good to have one or two also. Now the Bombers are starting to do some job, but here are AA guns waiting. Yeah, and he's still getting, he's still lucky that he's not losing a plane. Okay, Goopy's taking on the recon. Perfect, that's what Goopies are for. Takes down almost every recon with one shot if it's not in the woods or, yeah. Now he lost the first plane. Yeah, okay, so Green is bringing more and more AA to the front. But the problem is these Zal 40s are perfect against these AA guns standing here. You can shoot over the city. But now he's doing a good thing, splitting up his infantry with blitz from different positions. That's how you can get a Zal if you get close to it. Because instead of having machine guns, they have assault guns. So if the infantry gets in close range, you're gonna get the bazooka out and take him down. Okay, now comes some bombers to support. Also, Green is trying to sneak around from back here with one infantry guy, but always leaves one back here in case something comes by to build a building or something. Yeah, now the France guy is losing his planes because the AA it's positioned good. It's um, locking the air guy inside of his base. Yeah, but here this what not was not enough infantry. So what Green could have done is, okay, no, he couldn't have my stupid. Okay, so here comes two KV one. That's a pretty good reaction, pretty strong. Zao's 40s are not going to do much against that. But it's always good if you do a attack like this, always bring infantry too in the front. They'll push back everything and maybe can take over some buildings. Okay. What the France guy can do now is uh, maybe build himself... Oh, nice job back here with fanatism to get close to the airplanes, to snipe some airplanes. See. Sure, the fortified, uh, fortified position will kill him fast, but if you have fanatism on an infantry guy, he'll get pretty close. Okay, now the tanks are moving in. Recon is there also. Yeah, the France guy is taking care of the AA guns, but it's not going to help him that much. France guy has got a big problem now. He's building fortified positions. Yes, they shoot pretty good, but they're very fragile. Nice job. Green is moving up his ISUs too, to support against uh, bunkers incoming. Another bunker here. Here comes some uh, small baby tanks. Okay. Somehow the, the Zaws. This was not that stupid from the France guy. He's using the um, Zao 40s as meat shield tanks and shooting with heavy guns from behind. This is a move I like in an emergency situation. Because he was able to push back the big KV-1s for a while, but now they're teaming up again. What would have been cool is if uh, Green would have put an AA wall in front here and from behind Pushka's shooting all the time putting pressure on him BA-11 in here to see the buildings while he's doing this attack okay so now infantry coming from both sides again yeah France guy is only on one supply depot all the time so it's just a matter of time until this one's over Yeah, this is a good attack. Always infantry. Ne never forget infantry. Never forget how powerful it is. If these guys are running in front with Blitz and Fanatism, they're gonna survive a while. And if they get in range of tanks, they're gonna take them out very fast. And they can take over buildings. And then the KV-1s can follow him in and shoot from behind. Yeah, dangerous. Ah, okay. Nice reaction. Franska got himself an AT base. He has some advanced AT guns. One in here, one in here. But this is what I mean. Infantry in the front moving up. Absorbing all of the shots and everything, fanatism would be very important now. Yeah, KV ones. Yeah, now fanatism's on. Infantry coming from here also. Yeah, this looks pretty good now. Just take over the building, then it's over. Cause the France got only got the airfield. You could pump out a paratrooper, but it's not gonna help that much. Okay. I think pretty good game from both sides. France guy just made the big mistake not to use his planes very early to stop. If you have the advantage like this, if you have, it wasn't that stupid. The two Maginot bunkers can stop all kinds of stuff in the in the early game. Sure, the both sides are going to be still free, but it's going to take so long until somebody can reach you then. 
So it's going to be very effective to have an airfield, but you have to use um, the surprise and then stop bombing effective buildings right away. If the France guy would have bombed the uh, uh, supply depots right away, this game would have been different, I think. But cool game, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you did too. And then I would say, see you next time. Bye bye.